Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball. On either HCAM and Hopkins to WACA TV in Ashland, HCAT in Holliston, we are the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson will be joining us as well. Connor Donovan on camera. And this afternoon, it's Ashland Post 77 up against Bill Ricca. Bill Ricca 6 and 5 on the season. Ashland is 12 and 0. Bill Ricca right in the mix for a playoff spot, so they are certainly hoping for a win today. Bill Ricca post 268, and we are set to get underway. Matt Tomaselli is the pitcher, and the first pitch is hit right back to Tomaselli. Throw to first, no problem. 1 to 3 for out number 1. That was Connor Rich, the center fielder, grounding out to start things off. John Wormeckel, the catcher, will step in. Let's take a look at the post 268 lineup. Connor Rich starts things off with a ground out. John Wormeckel, the catcher, batting second. James Lagna, the third baseman, hitting third. Craig Meelan, the first baseman, hitting cleanup, wind up and the pitch just outside. CJ Zemetris, the shortstop, is hitting fifth, batting sixth. Second baseman, Nick Benson, hitting seventh. Right fielder, Andrew Ruffing, wind up and the pitch down low. Batting eighth, left fielder Cam Rich and Chris DeCicio, the pitcher, hitting ninth for Bill Ricca, post 268. They are led by head coach John McNault. And now for the post 77 defense, here is Larry Sacklat. Thanks, Tom, and good afternoon, everybody. Playing third base today is Dom Cavanaugh, Jackson Horning at shortstop, Dante Diavanzio at second base, nice Irish kid, first base, Ben Fink, left field. Alex Amalfi in center field, Sam Farrell, Drew Rancatori playing right, and the ball low. John Jewett behind the plate, and Matt Tomaselli on the mound. Well, there you have it. Post 77 defense, Ashland fighting to stay undefeated, and if they win today, they clinch the one spot in the zone playoffs. So they could have uh, a few practice games, if you will, if they are able to capture the victory today. They have three more games remaining after the one here on this Sunday afternoon. Wind up and the pitch. This is up the middle. Horning is able to glove it. The throw to first is going to be a long one, not in time. An infield single for Wormeckel. Actually just got into the very shallow grass area of left field. James Alagna will step in. Uh, Jackson can't find his regular glove, so a little bit of panic ensued, and they were able to find him a suitable stake from the rest of his teammates. Matty Tomaselli on the mound today. He's pitched 12 and a third of an inning. He has a zero ERA. He's one and O oh overall. He has started two games. 89 degrees at game time. Yep, certainly a bit of a humid day here at Ashland Middle School. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. And we are live on the HCAM YouTube page as well. So a big hello to all our live viewers today. And this is hit in the air to right field and it is not going to be caught. That's a fair ball. Lead runner is going to be waved around and heading to third and he will get there with ease. So it's going to be a double for James Alagna. Wormeckel now at third, so two in scoring position for Bill Ricca with one out. Craig Meelan, the cleanup hitter, will step in. Yeah, Drew Rancatori nursing a hamstring injury since the end of the high school season. Just, just missed getting into that ball. This kid's a big fella at the plate. Thomas Selly working from the stretch. Down low. Oh, called strike, rather. At least we have an umpire will let us know. Ball or strike. Both runners with a slight lead. Tomaselli looks at third and now delivers. And this is hit foul just over our heads, 0-2. Post-77 was down here two hours before game time, which is... Pretty impressive on an almost 90 degree day. Wind up and the pitch. 
And this is up the right side, takes a couple hops, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. The runners stay put, a huge out there. Four to three goes Meland, and that'll bring up C.J. Zemetris, the shortstop. Dante played that just right, got the ball on a couple hops, looked the runner back at third base, and threw over to Ben Fink. No damage. So now it's two runners in scoring position with two outs. There's a ball. Tomaselli was working with Sean Jewett before the game on his off-speed stuff. Set to deliver. And this is hit high in the air over to right field, ranging to his left, and making the catch is going to be Drew Rancatori for the third and final out of the top of the first, despite two hits, no runs score, and we will head to the bottom of the first, post 77 coming up to bat next on the Ashland Legion Baseball Net. Bottom of the first inning, Ashland post 77 coming up to the plate. Let's take a look at the Ashland Legion lineup. Sam Farrell, the center fielder, will start things off. Batting second, the right fielder, Drew Rancatori. Shortstop, Jackson Horning, will bat third. Dom Cavanaugh, the third baseman, hitting cleanup. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting fifth. Alex Amalfi, the left fielder, hitting sixth. Lawrence Tang, the DH, hitting seventh. Ben Fink, the first baseman, hitting eighth. And Dante Diavanzo, the second baseman, finishing things out for the post-77 batting order. Matty Tomaselli is their pitcher with the Bill Ricca post-268 defense. Here is Larry Sacklad as Sam Farrell steps in. Yeah, they got some tough pronunciations here. I'll do my best. Wait for the first pitch. Swing and a miss. James Alagna at third base. C.J. Zemetris at shortstop. Nick Benson in second base. Craig Melin, the first baseman. Cam Rich in left. Connor Rich in center. Andrew Ruffing in right field. Break and pitch hit in the air. Foul. Sean Wormickel, or Wormickel, behind the plate catching Chris DeCicio. Bill Ricca still fighting hard for a playoff spot at six and five on the season, right in the mix to grab either that fourth or fifth spot. Wind up and the pitch, Farrell gets a piece of this one over to right field, it goes and it's foul. Count remains 0 and two. We haven't seen Sam Farrell in a while. He hasn't reported into me where he's been, but nice to see him back. He's played five games this season, a 188 batting average, 364 on base percentage. In the mix today for post 77, a number of players had uh, some pre-planned weekend activities. Of course, this game is a makeup game, so a short roster for post 77 today as Farrell goes down by way of the K. Drew Rancatori will step in. Drew Rancatori at a 077 on the season at the plate. He's played in five games, gets a piece of this one up the middle, past the reach of the pitcher, picked up by the shortstop, throw over, and it is in time. Six to three, four out, number two. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, will step in. A healthy Rancatori would have beat that out, but unfortunately, he's wounded. Yeah, a bit of a hamstring injury for Rancatori. Jackson Horning at a 500 on this season. He has just tattooed the ball this Legion season. Yeah, last time against Lowell leading off, well, hitting third his first at bat, he tripled the defense. A pitch just low. Two and O on Horning. He's going to Skidmore College in New York in the in the fall. Wind up and the pitch. And he'll get a piece of this one in a right field. It goes. It's going to be a two out single for Jackson Hornung. Tom Cavanaugh, the third baseman, will step in. Cavanaugh is at a 409 on the season. I was informed, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. I was informed he will not be pitching against Hudson tomorrow night, post ah. 100. 
I think they're going to save their pitcher, their elite pitchers for the zone playoffs coming up. Well, you know what that Hudson game will be all about tomorrow night. Yep. A little payback. I have a feeling that's a game they'd like to win no matter what the situation is. Bit of a lead for Hornung at first. And the pitcher steps off to get him back to the bag. Hornung always a threat to steal. Set to deliver is DeCicio. Horning taking off. Throw up to second is going to be off the mark. And Horning slides in safely with the stolen base. It's exactly where Wermeekel threw the ball down uh, during warm-ups. So runner on second now with two outs. Could be a nice day on the base paths for the 77 runners if he's going to continue to airmail balls like that. Set to deliver. A little high. And he'll get a piece of this one hit in the air over to center field, but there to make the catch is Connor Rich. For the third and final out of the first inning to the top of the second we go, we are scoreless on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, due up for post 268 of Bill Ricca is 6, 7, and 8. Nick Benson, Andrew Ruffing, and Cam Rich to face Manny Tomaselli. Tomaselli has pitched well this season in the two starts he had, 12 and a third, and has not given up any earned runs. Has given up seven hits, but... None of them costly. Tomaselli is set to deal. Swing and a miss. Oh and one. Tomaselli gave him the high rider right there. There is a strike. Line up and the pitch down low. One and two. That was nice of a couple of post-77 parents to bring down a cooler full of beverages for the boys, but not for the uh, TV crew. It's all right. <laughs> and this is hit up the left side, bobbled by Horning, and he can't get the throw off. So Nick Benson will reach. I'm going to give that an error. Uh, he normally reads the ball really well on this field. But he took one step in, and he was in between hops and tried to drop step, and he knew he had to just eat that. So Andrew E6. Ruff yep. Andrew Ruffing will step in. There's a strike. Because of the short bench, there was a little argument Playful argument uh, before a game as to who was going to play first base, who had a mitt, whose mitt was broken in better than the other mitt. Down low. I don't know whether Ben Fink's mitt is on his hand or it's somebody else's, but he's over there at first base. Set to deliver. Hit in foul territory and not able to make the catch is Ben Fink. Well, there's a hole in this glove, I think. Because Lawrence Tang was taking Ooh, balls over there earlier. There. Uh, give him an error. Eh, he did trip, though. Oh, come on, Steve. <laughs> oh, come on, Steve. He tripped. He did. Okay. It's giving, all the field's fault. I'm not giving that an error. Blame the grounds crew, Larry. There's okay. a pot. There's a pothole right where he was running. Swing and a miss. Runner taking off from first row to second. No, just off the mark. Stolen base for Benson. Jackson's still holding the ball up. I don't know for what reason he was safe. He's not going to overturn the call. So stolen base.
Roughing will step back in. Or excuse me, this is Cam Rich. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Well, I got an umpiring question for you, Steve. Yeah, let's hear uh, it. I'll get to it in just a second. I was thinking about this all the way over two hours ago. And this is going to be a fair ball picked up by Jewett. Throw to first is going to be high. And here comes Nick Benson to score the first run of the game. So Benson scores on the error. That could have been a pretty routine ground out there, but Cam Rich going to reach on the error as well. Second error of the inning for One post base. 77. One base or so. two if he's throwing from the outfield. What's the rule? On that one? Yeah. Well, the ball it didn't go out of play. It, I think he called out of play, I think. Well, if he did, it'd be one base from where he last legally was. So in this case, he touches first, the ball goes out, so you, you, you'd place him at second. As he did. Obviously, we're over here at third, so we can't really see the first base line if it actually rolls out or not. So it's one on, one out, one run in. There's a strike. If the ball's overthrown in play from the outfield, it's two bases, right? From the outfield? Yeah. And this is up the right side and off the glove of Fink. It was in foul territory. All right, I'll stop the umpiring question. Yeah, again, two from where he last legally was. That, that, that's the real thing. It's where the runner was last. So a bit of a rough start for post-77 defensively. Set to deliver, down low. One and two is the count. Runner with a slight lead at second, up high. Two and two count now. Wind up and the pitch. And this is ripped up the right side. Glove by the second baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Two away. Four to three on the out. Camrich does advance to third. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Connor Rich. So Rich steps in and is set to go. Up high. No relation to Richie Rich, <laughs> in case anybody was wondering. Wind up. And the pitch. There's a strike. The 1-1. One, one. Down low. No, oh, one and two, excuse me, that was a strike. The moaning and groaning from the Bill Rick. It's not where it lands, it's where it crosses the plate. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops. Glove by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Four to three for out number three, but Bill Ricca does play to run, and they lead it one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second on the Asher Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, Sean Jewett stepping in. Five, six, and seven do up. Jewett, Amalfi, Tang. That pitch down low. So here's my question. You umpire at every level, right, from Little League on up or have at one time in your life. Plate is 17 inches across. Mm -hmm. So in the case of... There's a strike. strike. In the case of Little League, how much a circumference of the baseball do you give for a little league off off the plate. Most people say two balls in and out. Wow, that's pretty 
Well, but at same pretty time, generous. You, at the same time, you have to to keep it moving. Oh, yeah, right. Marathon. No, no one wants to be there all day. Okay. As you move up to Babe Ruth, ground ball to third. Picked up by the third baseman. Throws over to first. One out. So you move up a level to, let's say, Babe Ruth, where the kids are wearing cleats for the first time and you, uh, facing pitchers that can, you know, step off the rubber, pick over, or whatever. Yeah. What latitude do you give the 13 to 15 year olders? A lot. Yeah, you know, they're just starting to learn the big diamond. That's fouled away by Amalfi. Yeah, so when they're first starting to learn the big diamonds, you know, you want to have a lot of latitude and have them learn from their mistakes. That's really the key, especially with stuff like box, stuff like that. Is it two baseballs width or is it one is baseball width? In terms of the strike zone? Yes. It really depends how the game's going. <laughs> okay. So uh, generally you're going to start with one ball on both sides and you expand it if need be. One and one on Amalfi, and that's fouled away. He fouled that one off his ankle, I believe. That's got to hurt. Yeah, he's in some pain there. Yeah. So he'll be all right. He's going to take a minute. Uh, Dr. Larry says he'll be just fine. Oh, yes. Well, if Dr. Larry says it. <laughs> it's Dr. Watson, actually. So <laughs> as you move up to, let's say, a senior Ruth level, mm -hmm. let's say one level below this, yeah. what is the, the latitude? In terms of the strike zone? Yes. It's your standard strike zone. You you touch it, you clip it. Yeah, uh, you know, there's some of us who like to call it a little more inside, there's some who like to call it a little more outside. I prefer to call things more on the outside and more high in the zone, not huge on things that are more inside, not big on stuff that's lower. So I think it's going to vary from umpire to umpire. So now we get to the 17 to 19 year old. There's these guys. Yep. You just got to have any part of the ball? It's, it's going to be the same thing, essentially. Okay, from here yeah. on up. Yeah. So Coach Obid was seeing if Alex Amelfi is okay to stay in the game. He appears to be. It's a one and two count on Amalfi. Amalfi this season has hit the ball pretty well. 385 batting average, 500 on base percentage. The CCO set to deliver the one two up high. Bases are clear for post 77, one out. A one nothing Bill Rick a lead here in the bottom of the second. Down low. Full count now on Amalfi. Lawrence Tang do up next. Now, Steve, I don't know whether this is happening in your neck of the woods where you're from, but at one time, Six years ago when Hopkins did, they had 1,200 kids in their little league program, boys and girls. Now it's down to about 600. There's a walk to Amalfi. One on, one out. Lawrence Tang will step in. With an increase of population. Yeah, so. that's not good. And it's not just out here. The enrollment in youth programs in a lot of areas has declined, unfortunately. Is it the game? Is it the... Club ball, the AAU ball, if you will, the paid baseball. I think it's more the game than it is that. It's unfortunate. It is. Big swing there from Tang and a miss, so and one. I think the youth nowadays don't find the game quite as intriguing. You know, games can drag on. They can take a long time. I think we all know that. And then you have sports like soccer and lacrosse that have more action and are faster paced. So... This one is hit in the air, foul territory, 0-2. So I think that's a big part of the reason why you're seeing that decrease in Roman. And it is unfortunate. So the really good baseball you're going to see, uh, kids that want to specialize or are playing the uh, $2,000 a year oh, club two, ball. Oh, 2000 that's cheap. Or two I think most of them are in the two to four. four to $5,000 range. Down low. Yeah, if, if you're talking lessons in the cage – Classroom sessions, all that stuff. Spring schedule, summer schedule. It's about four or five thousand bucks. Travel to tournaments. Yep, traveling, all that good stuff. But definitely not cheap. Here's the one too. He'll get a piece of this one. It is in foul territory. Is it catchable? Yes. 
So the first baseman able to make the catch for the second out of the inning. Home plate umpire had a good angle on that. There's Craig Neeland making the catch. And now stepping in is Ben Fink. And so we can we can expect the compression of Legion ball from 10 zones down to eight. Down low. They should compress now. And I was re actually reading through the rule book last week. The state committee does have the authority to do whatever they want in terms of how they align zones without any input whatsoever from the teams. It was not by county or however it uh, is set up now. Down low. Well, you know, if it was by geography, then Ashland should be in zone four, right? Because think about it, you have Milford and Framingham. Milford has to travel through Framingham and vice versa. If you travel through Ashland, they get to Framingham. Yeah, you're right. But yet Ashland's in zone five. Oh, Natick, too. N N Natick's in the same boat. Well, they are going to have to do something. Yes. Because uh, right now you're sitting, what, seven teams, eight teams in zone five? Well, they lost two. Right. Medford and well, Lincoln Sudbury, or Sudbury this year. It is eight overall. Yes, yeah, so you start with 10, you narrow it down to eight. Uh, I think that's too small. And then you look at zone six. I believe they have 12. Yeah, they, they actually have two divisions. It's so big. You know, zone four has 12. A couple teams may or may not be back in 2019, uh, 20 rather. I think you'll see something done by the time next season starts. Ben Fink draws a walk, so it's two on now with two outs. And that'll bring up Dante Diavanzo, the second baseman. Late arrival. Very late arrival, like five minutes before game. Oh, well, you know, it's Sunday. Well, Sunday's a makeup game, so good to stay out. Well, they expected to go with nine, and he popped up. Diavanzo had a 250 on the season, 333 on base percentage. Number of players absent today for post 77. And this is hit in the air over to right field. That'll drop in for a hit. Lead runner going to be stopped at third. That'll load up the bases for post 77. But there is two outs. A single for Diavanzo. Sam Farrell will step in. And I think he would have sent him off he had he not uh, hit one off his ankle earlier. Yep. Yeah, I think that was the main consideration there. Yeah, because you do have the top of the order due up, too. So, chance to do some damage right here. Wind up and the pitch. Farrell will fist that one foul. 0 oh and 1. I know Jake Obed would probably like to get this win today and give his guys a rest. Yep. Yeah, I mean, pretty much they'll have to lose three out of the next four to give any other team a chance to get that one spot. Or the other team drop one. Right. The magic number is one. <laughs> and I believe it's Hudson in second place right now. And then you got Lowell on their heels. That oh. pitch up high. Hudson and Steve may have something to play for tomorrow night if... Ashland happens to drop this one today. I think they're going to be playing hard no matter what. I think they want some revenge. There's a called strike. Two and two. Farrell struck out in the first inning. He'll get a piece of this one. Hit in the air. Foul territory. And it is caught. So despite loading the bases, no run score, and we will head to the top of the third. We are scoreless. Uh, or excuse me, it's Bill Ricca leading one to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning, a one nothing Bill Ricca lead. Two, three, and four do up for post 268. John Wormeckel, the catcher, James Lagna, the third baseman, Craig Melin, the first baseman. To face Matty Tomaselli. Well, it was an unearned run last inning for Bill Ricca. Nick Benson reached on a Jackson Hornung error and then scored on a Sean Jewett error. 
for those that did not see the uh, Hudson Post 100, the uh, Ashland Post 77 game the other night, you can find it on the YouTube page. Is hit in the air to right field and rushing in to try to make the catch was Rankatori, but Fink got in front of him and was able to, or not able to make the catch. So where Meckle reaches. Uh, it was a game for the ages. Anything and everything happened in that game, and I won't. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm surprised at the lack of communication over yeah, on the right side. Yeah, it's the side. same here. Very uncharacteristic. That's the third error of the game for post 77 as James Alagna steps in. I think Rankatori had that ball if Fink backed off up high. Yep. Bottom line on that one, need to communicate better. Absolutely. That's really all there is to it. Simple fix. Yep. Of course, you have a number of players in positions they're not necessarily used to today. Yep. So. That could be part of the That's issue. A, it's a makeup game. It wasn't on the original schedule. You're going a bit shorthanded. So it is what it is. Hey, Steve, but as you always say, no excuses, right? It is never <laughs> an excuses. I think that's why you were born with a mouth is to uh, use it when playing baseball. Checking at first. Almost got him. Or just safe is Wormeckle. If that pickoff move was slightly faster, I think you would have had him. You almost had him anyway. Yep. Tomaselli takes a long look at first and is set to deal. And this is ripped in a right field. That'll get down for a hit. Wormeckel being waved around, heading over to third. Is he going to try to score? No. So it's going to be two in scoring position for Bill Ricca with no outs. Craig Melan, the cleanup hitter, will step in. That was a wide turnaround third, huh? It certainly was. I think they thought about it. I think Coach. McNaught was a little bit in debate whether to send him or not, but then once he saw the throw to the cutoff man, he decided, nope, go back. We had some defensive changes, so Fink is out there in right field, and Amalfi is now first base, and Rankatori is out in left. So Farrell stayed in center, so. Yeah, they're shifting everybody around. Fouled away. Fink was lobbying to pay outfield coach. I can play it, I can play it, I promise, I promise. I'll shag balls even. So he got his wish, he's out in right field. The 0-1. Hit high in the air, over to left field, it's caught. Runner from third, gonna try to tag. The throw in is cut off, throw it on the plate. Did they get him? Yes! Double play! Drew Ranka Torrey with an unbelievable throw in and then a nice job by Kavanaugh getting it right to Jewett to get Wormeckle at the plate. He left way too late on that. Certainly did. Well, he's not fleet of foot, but that was a perfect cut play yeah. that they work on or should work on all the time. Kavanaugh was in a perfect spot for that throw that was come in from left field and from the time the catch was made to uh, the time he started running, it, there's probably two seconds of real time left. So th that's an eternity. You need to leave as soon as that ball's caught. It cost him. It was, a, it was a close play at the plate. Well, maybe the defensive change paying off a little bit. Great throw there by Rankatori. Pitch is low to C.J. Zemetris, the shortstop. Yeah, and he only had one chance to make that throw. He nailed it. Certainly did. No hesitation whatsoever no. on Tom Cavanaugh's part. Yeah, he had the great reaction as that ball gets away from Jewett. Elagna advances the third on the wild pitch. Two outs, runner on third. A one nothing Bill Rick a lead. Matty Tomaselli trying to get out of this inning with limited damage. And this is hit in the air over to left center. That's going to get down, and another run will score. It's going to be an RBI single for C.J. Zemetris. 2-0, post 268. That'll bring up Nick Benson, the second baseman. Well, this uh, 
Start to this game looking a little like that Lowell game this past Thursday. It's like deja vu all, all over again. <laughs> yes, Yogi, it is. That's fouled away. Benson really reached out to get a swing on that one. Yeah, some, some, some real sloppy D, which you would not expect. Yeah, it could just be one of, those, one of those days. <laughs> it ben, is baseball. Stuff like that does happen. Yep. Ben, ben Fink is not used to playing the outfield, so... There's a swing and a miss, so and two. Last time these two teams met was last Sunday, July 7th. It was a 2 nothing post-77 win over in Bill Ricca. While you were on vacation? That's right. Tomaselli from the stretch. That pitch is just low. One and two. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the right side. Slow roller, the flip to second for the force out. And that'll do it for the top half of the third to the bottom of the inning we go. It's 2-0 Bill Ricca on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning, two, three, and four stepping in for post 77. Drew Rancatori will start things off. He started the game in right field, has since moved over to left field and made a great defensive play last inning with the assistance of Dom Cavanaugh to get a double play, a fly out and catch the lead runner trying to score. That pitch up high. Drew's got good power, but no wheels. So if you get it a gapper, he can get two bases. That is inside, two and O. Oh. Rankatori was one for 13 at the plate heading into this game, but of course he's been battling that hamstring injury and trying to get back into the swing of things. A swing and a miss there, two and one. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson, happy to be on the call this Sunday afternoon for Ashland Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera, fouled away. Two and two. Drew told me before the game his hamstring injury is getting a little bit better. I said, you get a wrap on it? He goes, no. Why not? He goes, I don't know. Uh, he's the incoming president of the student class. <laughs> One away. He strikes out two. He doesn't have a wrap on his hamstring. And so why don't you Google hamstring wrap sports baseball? And maybe you won't run around like a wounded giraffe. <laughs> Jackson, maybe, maybe I'll do that. Jackson Horning steps in. It was a serious conversation. It wasn't goofing on him or anything. Right. Just, well, you should he, probably look into that. Yeah, I mean... Down low, one and one. Well, the athletic trainer did it for me uh, when I first heard it. What did they do? Oh, an ace bandage on it, pretty tight, got some compression. So you're still injured and no compression. Okay. Inside and tight, two and one. I get paid to broadcast, not to consult with medical issues. <laughs> well, that's a shame. <laughs> Could be the medical advisor. Yeah. Well, uh, there's only one of us here who, who works in healthcare. That's true. <laughs> yes, Dr. Watson. Dr. <laughs> Watson. Right. The doctor of everything. <laughs> the 3 1 pitch to Hornung. And he'll get a piece of this one in the air over to right field and caught. Two away. Andrew Ruffing was playing deep and it paid off there. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. That's about a long out. Yeah, very loud out. 2 nothing. Bill Rick a lead here in the bottom of the third. 
Kind of a slow start to things for post-77. A sleepy Sunday afternoon. Yeah, exactly. Are you <laughs> saying it could be a trap game here? See if they could well, be. You, you said it on Thursday, though. I know, and it almost was, if not for some late-inning heroics. Well, you got to keep in mind, too, Bill Ricca, they're in a must-win situation. If they want any chance at going to the postseason, this is a huge game for them. Down low. And post 77, of course, they have established some distance between themselves and the rest of the zone, so certainly a more comfortable situation for Ashland. Well, I don't know whether DeCicio is their number one. There's a strike. Well, he's pitching like it. Two and one. Crowd trickling in. Line up and the pitch, and this is up the left side. That'll take a couple hops, and that'll get through for a hit. It's going to be a two-out single for Kavanaugh. Sean Jewett, the catcher, will step in. Yeah, you don't want to get in front of uh, bouncing balls on this uh, infield. Break a nose, get one in the eye. It's better, better off just letting it go through. Oh, certainly. You don't know where that ball is going to go. Dom Cavanaugh wanted, <laughs> uh, during batting practice, he got 12 extra swings because he wanted to hit one out. And Coach Obid acquiesced, finally said, okay, Dom, you've had enough. You're not going yard today. Wormeckel wanted a conversation with the CCO. In the meantime, Jewett took the opportunity to talk to Coach Obid, now steps into the right-handed batter's box. Jewett has been on fire with the bat. Wind up in the pitch, gets a piece of this one right to the third baseman. That is just, uh, I guess some bad luck there by Jewett. And that'll be the third out of the inning. It's a 2-0 Bill Rick lead as we head to the top of the fourth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning, Bill Rick post 268 coming up to the plate, 7, 8, and 9 due up. Andrew Ruffing, Cam Rich, Chris DeCicio. A 2-0 lead for Bill Ricca. Post 77 meeting up on the mound, trying to get the blood flowing, get some uh, momentum on their side. Bill Ricca has scored one run in each of the last two innings. Matty Tomaselli back out on the mound. Wind up and the pitch. There's a ball. One and oh. Tomaselli set to deal. There's a strike, one and one. It's going to be a busy week for post 77. They got Hudson tomorrow, 545 right here at Ashland Middle School. Then on Tuesday, it's Waltham, 545. Then Wednesday, Natick right here at Ashland Middle School, 545. Or any of those three besides Hudson uh, got anything to play for? It all depends. It depends if the magic number's one, so. I meant to the other teams, Waltham or Natick. Oh, they certainly do. Both teams are in the mix for a playoff spot, battling for seeding. Hit foul out of play. That'll uh, fill up the count. Tomaselli set to deal. Swing and a miss, out number one. Cam Rich, the left fielder, will step in now. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I re-watched re that hudson Ashley game last night because I'm such a boring person, I had nothing to do. But it was worth the watch, or the rewatch, or the re-re-rewatch. Lots of stuff in that game. 
certainly was. It was also a big highlight reel yeah. from that game up on the HCAM YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAM TV. Eight minutes of tremendous highlights. <laughs> Pitch down low, two and one. It was just some great hitting and some great defensive plays in that game as well. That pitch down low, mostly by post 77, of course. Three and one. Mm, 17 and three game, but you were masterful, I got to say. Why, thank you. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Full count. Leg lift and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Second straight strikeout for Matty Tomaselli. That'll bring up Chris DeCicio, the pitcher. Three strikeouts in the game for Tomaselli. I'm just feeling a lack of intensity uh, on post 77's part today. I know it's hot. It's hot for the other team. They got something to play for, but it's just something in the air. Hit in the air over to center field. Ranging back to make the catch is Hornung for the third and final out of the top of the fourth. To the bottom of the inning we go. It's 2-0 Bill Ricca on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fourth inning coming up for post 77, 6, 7, and 8. Alex Amelfi, Lawrence Tang, Ben Fink. Trying to get something started offensively. It's been a slow day offensively for post 77. No runs, three hits. Let's see if they can get something going here. Good part of the lineup to do so. The CCO deals. Breaking the pitch outside, 1 and 0. Oh. Malfi walked in his only played appearance of the game back in the second inning. Down low. Two zero pitch. Swing and a miss. That was a home run swing if I ever saw one. Got to string together a few hits. CCO delivers. This is fouled away. Two and two. The CCO doesn't seem to have a lot of gas on his fastball. Fouled away. Count remains two and two. Got a sort of looping breaking pitch. He's just not all that impressive. I mean, I'm not trying to insult the kid. It's just. I think what you're saying is post 77 should probably have a few more hits. Yeah, light them up. Melfi lights that one foul. <coughs> well, the CCO certainly has good movement on his pitches. We'll give him that. Yeah, it moves forward. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. All right. No, but I'm <laughs> just saying, he's just not that impressive. And 77's face. This is up the left side. Picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first. And a nice play by Alagna for out number one. Was able to field it off an awkward hop. One down. Lawrence Tang to the plate. And he fielded it down the danger zone there. Well, the last out of the last inning, he... Got one uh, hit right at him. He didn't have to move left, right, up, or down. He just stuck his glove out. The batter, Sean Jewett. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Now, well, Steve, what's your take on DeCicio? Yeah? <laughs> I'd say he's... Uh, he's mowing him down and getting outs. That's right. So... It's it's the bottom line that counts. I'm a bottom line guy. Oh, yeah. okay. He's not throwing a lot of balls. He's got the two walks there in the second, but other than that, he's he's done quite well with the strike zone. I agree. Throw strikes, get outs. That's a pitcher's job. That's the umpire's job. The 1-0. Oh. 
And that was low, two and oh. Tang flew out and has only played appearance. I guess what I'm trying to say, he's, he doesn't have overpowering stuff. But it's working. Yeah, it's working so far. Down low. It's like you, Larry. You don't have right. overpowering stuff, but it works. And uh, we'll <laughs> clear something up. He likes to be called Lawrence, not Larry Tang. They call him Larry just to bust him. Uh, it's Lawrence. Well, it's only one Larry here. That's right. Oh. Four-pitch walk to Lawrence Tang. One out, one on. Ben Fink to the plate. You can hear from the dugout. They're uh, giving Larry some props, but it's Lawrence Tang. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it's cooled off considerably over the last half hour or so. Well, especially for me, because I was umpiring in 95-degree heat behind the plate. Oh, so, my God. How many yeah, times has he said this already? It's the first time I've said it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You, That's the first I time. asked you whether you took a shower after the game. Of course. So how hot was the heat, Steve? <laughs> Very. <laughs> and you had 10 <laughs> degrees on because of your gear? So it was oh, like least, 105? Yeah. yeah. So you were like out in the Steve was in a Death Valley or something, <laughs> a Mojave Desert. <laughs> this is fouled away. So what you're telling me is that the Mojave Desert has been moved to Grafton? <laughs> Apparently for you it did. <laughs> if it was 105 where you were, it must be like 155 in the Mojave Desert. <laughs> Geography 101 here. Yeah, if, I mean, if you're umpiring out there, you could have an IV. <laughs> CCO from the stretch, set to deliver the 0-2. Runner on first with a little bit of a lead. Checking at first, and he's back safe. One and two. Smart move by the catcher. Yeah, pretty good back pick there. If you use it really sparingly, it can be effective. But if you're always jumping up, threatening the throw, no surprise. And this is hit in foul territory out of play. Count remains one and two. For example, the other night in the Hudson game, Garrard, the catcher, was back picking and throwing the ball. And he ended up costing his team runs. How many did he throw in the outfield? Two or three? One, two pitch. Fouled away. The Fink fight right here. Good battle between Ben Fink and Chris DeCicio. Oh, man. The umpire doesn't want to bend over. Wants more ammo. He wants a half a dozen eggs is what <laughs> he wants. I hope the Legion can afford it. Those, those balls aren't cheap, you know. What, about six bucks a ball? Yeah, about six bucks a ball. Oh. And, of course, you lose a lot over here on the third baseline, unfortunately. Well, you certainly do. Tang with a bit of a lead at first. CCO deals up high. That's three beers down at the post, right? Got to make that up. Those balls, you got to pay for them. I'll just have to jack up those prices, I guess, huh? Yep. Chardonnay for the ladies and the beers for the boys. I'm not being sexist. It's what I was told before the game. This is hit in the air, high in the air, over to left field and caught. Two away. Tank stays put at first base. That'll bring up Dante Diavanzo, the second baseman. He inherited the number nine number from Ronan Bates, who spent his first year up at the University of Massachusetts at Lowell. He was a river hawk or river rat or whatever they're called. River it. hawk. <laughs> river hawk. <laughs> he was actually just up there last night for a little spinners game. They play at Lulasher Park, which is on the campus of UMass Lowell. I went to a hockey game there this year. I got taken. Over at the Songa Center. Walked right by there last right. night. Somebody yep. took me. How do you like that? Yeah, how about that? Yeah. yeah. Good place to visit. Yeah. Lovely young lady to see the UMass Amherst Minutemen face off against the Riverhawks. The 1 0. There's a strike. How UMass did and UMass. How did UMass do lost. yesterday? Did they win? They, they lost. 5 3. Ah. Did you go that game? Or are we talking no. about. 
We're, we're talking we're, baseball. Oh, we're talking baseball. Yeah, okay. the sport we're broadcasting. Okay, all right. <laughs> that was, I thought it was January. Not yet. <laughs> the one one. Down low. Oh, the umpire thought about that for a good long time. Yeah, they won. I think the game only took two hours and forty-five minutes. Oh, there you go. Pace of play. Rob Absolutely. Manfred would love that. Here's the 2-1 to Diavonzo. And this is up the left side. Takes a couple hops. Picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first. No problem. James Lagna making it look easy. 5-3 to three for out number three. To the top of the fifth we go. 2 nothing. Bill Ricca on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fifth inning, top of the order for Bill Ricca. 2 nothing lead for post 268. Post 77 just having a little trouble finding the offense here today. Do up for Bill Ricca, Connor Rich, John Wermeckel, and James Lagna. Yeah, Lagna is playing ball like he's uh, Brooke Robinson, Brooks Robinson down at third base today. Getting everything. He's also having a great day at the plate. He's two for two at the plate, a score to run. If we had anything to give out as far as prizes, like plastic whistles or combs, I'd give it to him for being the player of the game so far. But fortunately, we can't afford that in the budget. This is hit in the air over to left field and caught. Nice catch there by Rankatori, who's made a couple of nice plays over in left field today. I don't know. It's kind of ugly looking, wasn't it, Steve? Well, I know. It's the most important thing is he caught it. So that'll bring up John Werbeckel. Down low. Oh, no. Strike. Oh, and one. Wormeckel is one for two today. Reached on an error and singled. Down low. If not for a couple of sort of boneheaded mistakes defensively, uh, Tomaselli should have a uh, shutout going. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. One and two. Well, one of the runs was earned. All right, the so other was not. He's got a microscopic ERA so far this year. So, And this is up the left side, off the glove of Kavanaugh, who's trying to backhand it. And Wormeckel will reach. Difficult play to make. I'll uh, give it a single. James Lagna will step in. Lagna, two for two today. Certainly a hitter you want to be careful with if you're Thomas Ellie. Yeah, Dom knows the danger of the hot corner down there, so he protected himself. There's a strike. Thomas Ellie working from the stretch. Wind up and the pitch, down low. One and one. Tomaselli set to deliver. Down low, checking at first, and the runner's back just safe. Good throw by Jewett, two and one. Solid idea there. Yep. Pick the right pitch to throw yep. down on. Pitch outside. To his arm side, so not abusing it. And this is up the left side and dropped by Kavanaugh. Throw to first in time. So despite the little mishandle, he's able to get the five to three out. Two away. Well, he shouldn't be upset with himself. I mean, he stayed with it. Yeah. Wormeckel moves up to second. Meeland to the plate. He's been a pain in the neck today, hasn't he, Tom? Not really. He's 0 for 2. Really? Oh, somebody looks like him then. <laughs> big boy. The lefty awaits the pitch. There's strike one. To 
Thomas Selly working from the stretch with the runner on second. Takes a look at second. And deals. Just inside, says the home plate umpire. One and one. Runner's not being held on at second base. I mean, if he had any speed, he could walk down the third, but. Breaking pitch outside, two and one. Getting a very big secondary lead, but. Two one pitch, swing and a miss. Two and two. Not a good looking swing. I've lost track of innings. I've been so stimulated. We're in the fifth inning, top five. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hit in it's the air, Tom, foul territory. And he could have had it if he hustled a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> he'd have to dive into a tree or two, but it was possible. It's only one or two trees. Yeah, right. No big deal, right? Yeah, knock those trees over. Yeah. Just get to yeah. the ball. Tree me. <laughs> Reach me. Yeah, exactly. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Full count now on Meeland. Top of the fifth. The 2 nothing lead for Bill Ricca. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklett, Steve Watson on the call for Ashland Legion Baseball. Inside, there's a walk. Two on, two outs. That'll bring up C.J. Zemetris, who's one for two today with an RBI. Beautiful Sunday afternoon for baseball. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, and a throw up to second to try to catch the runner off guard. Not in time where Meckle back safely. A good throw by Jewett. I think Jewett did that on his own because Farrell was not running in. They had a play on, and Farrell knew it was going to happen. He'd be making a mad dash for an overthrow. Wind up and the pitch. Hit high in the air over to left field and caught by Rankatori. And that is the third and final out of the top of the fifth. To the bottom of the fifth we go. 2 nothing. Bill Ricca on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Trade secrets. Bottom of the fifth inning. Top of the order for post 77. Sam Farrell, Drew Rankatori, and Jackson Horning do up. To face Chris DeCicio has thrown a very good game so far for Bill Ricca post 268. Don't tell Larry that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Larry likes to be uh, critical when he can. No, really? DeCicio <laughs> <laughs> set to deliver to Farrell, who's 0 for 2 so far today. That pitch down low. One and O. Oh. Well, it's been a pitcher's duel today between Chris DeCicio and Matty Tomaselli, both yep. throwing pretty good games. Down low. Two and O. Oh. Two zero pitch, down low. So far today, Decisio has walked three hitters. There is walk number four. One on, no outs. Tying run coming to the plate. 2-0 lead for Bill Ricca here in the bottom of the fifth, but Drew Rankatori 
Jackson Hornung and Dom Cavanaugh set to step in. Runner on first, no outs. Big lead for Farrell, down low. Frank Atori 0 for 2 so far today. I'd say pretty well overdue for a hit. Runner taking off as this is hit high in the air over to shallow center field. Could be trouble, but no, it's caught one away. Farrell retreats back to first. Jackson Horning will step in. Nice range there by Connor Rich. I'm back. Did you miss me? You were missed greatly. I just took a survey of the crowd. They survey put, says? Survey says, well, they barely have a pulse over there. Sounds accurate. That pitch down low. Where Mickle thought about back picking the first. They got a vibe. They've, they have this feeling. They can't put it into words. Bit of a lead for Farrell. That pitch down low. 2 and 0 oh is the count on Hornung. One on, one out. Tom Kavanaugh on deck. Part of the order you want to see. To make something happen. Excuse me. Wind up in the pitch. There's a bunt pulled back. Pitch down low. Runner taking off from first. The ball got away from Wormeck a little bit. So an easy steal for Farrell. 3 and 0 oh now on Hornung. Could the CCO be running out of gas a little bit? Nah. And there's the walk. I think they went intentional. Since it was 3-0 and anyway, might as well put that runner at first and have a play at either bag. Dom Cavanaugh will step in. That's a good move, part of the uh, Bell Rick manager. Just give Jackson the four-fingered salute. And there's a strike. Down low. We don't get the benefit of inside, outside. We're just able to see high, low. Looked looked good, obviously, inside. Here's the 1-1. One, one. There's a strike. One and two on Kavanaugh, who's one for two today. Big, he didn't like the call. Big opportunity here for Kavanaugh with two on and one out. Sean Jewett waiting on deck. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, foul territory, and it is going to be out of the range of Meeland. One and two count. Tom Cavanaugh is going to be uh, the number one pitcher for Ashland, along with Grover. And this is up the left side foul. Count remains one and two. One or one A, he says. He's kind of modest kid. Here's the one, two, and this is ripped right to the third baseman. Throw to second, and they double him up. Wow. James Halagna just seems to always be in the right place at the right time. And that will wrap up the fifth inning. To the top of the six we go. Bill Ricca with a 2 nothing lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. 
Top of the sixth inning, a 2 nothing lead for Bill Rick, a post 268. Post 77 had two on with one out last inning, but an unfortunate double play that Kavanaugh hit into ended the inning. It was ball hit right to the third baseman who then threw over to second to get Farrell trying to retreat. Benson steps in, second baseman. And he'll take a strike, 0 oh and 1. Nick Benson has reached on an error, scored a run, and grounded out today. Tomaselli deals, down low, 1 and 1. Well, post 77 will be down to their final six outs. What part of the order are we in here, Tom? I lost my score sheet. And this is up the left side, foul. Six, seven, and eight due up for Bill Ricca, Nick Benson, Andrew Ruff, and Cam Rich. The people at home might have lost their score sheets too, so thank you. No, they didn't, only you. Okay. Dom Kavanaugh could have laid out for that. And this is up the middle, could be difficult, and it is fielded, throw to first. Nice job by the second baseman, one away. He's been busy today. He gets the plastic whistle or comb. Ben Fink with a nice play there. He's had a number of great defensive masterpieces this season. Actually, excuse me, that was not Fink. That is Diavanzo. Uh, That'll bring up Andrew Ruffing. Diavanzo is the only blonde on the team. Just, just letting you know. This is hit in the air over to right field. Could be trouble, and that's going to get down in front of the right fielder. Ruffing is going to head over to second base. It's a stand-up double. Cam Rich will step in to the batter's box now, the left fielder. Warning track power. Bill Ricca trying to add some security here in the top of the six. Tomaselli working from the stretch. Takes a look at second and deals. There's a strike. Oh and one. Set to deliver. Foul tip, oh and two. Tomaselli takes a long look in. He deals up high. And I think the hitter might have been saying it hit him. Two and two. Excuse me, one and two. Tomaselli looks at second and deals. And this is up the right side. That's going to get through into right field. Lead runner will be held up at third. And it will be runners on the corners with one out. Four post 268. Chris DeCicio, the pitcher, will step in and try to help his own cause here. Amalfi's tapping himself on the chest. He knows he should have been at or around the pitcher's mound for that uh, cutoff. But Tomaselli should have been behind home plate. Tomaselli looks at first and is set to deal. This is up the right side, a very slow roller, bobble, throw to first. They'll get an out at first, but a run scores. 3 nothing. Bill Ricca. So a 4-3 to three sacrifice RBI ground out for the pitcher, Chris DeCicio. Andrew Ruffing comes around to score. Cam Rich up to second. That'll bring up Connor Rich, the center fielder. No chance to get the runner at the plate there. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit in the air. Over to right field, and it is caught. A nice catch in right field by Fink for the 
Third out of the inning. We will head to the bottom of the six. It's Bill Ricca leading three to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the sixth inning. Post 77 down to their final six outs. Two up, five, six, and seven. Sean Jewett, Alex Amalfi, Lawrence Tang, a three nothing lead for Bill Ricca. Post 77 bats have been pretty quiet here today. Chris DeCicio has pitched a very good game for Bill Ricca up to this point. Time to rally right here. I agree. Sean Jewett will step in. He's 0 for 2 today. Coming into the game, a 567 batting average on the Legion season for Jewett. 17 for 30 at the plate, 667 on base percentage. We'll see if he can get something started here. Ball one. Here's the plan. Keep the ball away from my lag now. Hit it Hit up it. the right side. Yeah, somewhere. Down low. Two and oh. Been like a ball magnet today. He got Jewett earlier in the game. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Two and one. Two one pitch, and this is a slow roller up the left side. Glove by the shortstop. Throw to first, and in time, says the umpire. But boy, was that close. I don't know. I thought the runner had it by a step. Item safe. Item safe, absolutely. He dropped the ball, but that was after he called oh, him out. Oh, wait. No, he is going to be safe, it looks like. Or is he? No. What's going on here? All right, Jewett really thought he was safe, so he was <laughs> staying on first base, but the umpire said, nope, you're out. He held in his glove long enough, uh, apparently. I just thought that Jewett actually beat the throw. Gives the umpire a thumbs up. Alex Amelfi will step in. Well, that was certainly an iffy call. Wind up and the pitch. This is up the left side, right to Alagna, who, as Larry has said, has been a ball magnet today, and he gets out number two. He's a good spitter, too. That's an art, right, Steve? Sure is. Lawrence Tang will step in. Tang is 0 for 1 with a walk. His first game in the post-77 starting Lineup as the DH. And he certainly has a whole lot of power. I gotta say that Bo Ricker uh, post is a lot nicer uniforms than the uh, Ashland post. I disagree. I think Ashland has the best uniforms in the zone. Two oh. and oh. We're gonna go. We're gonna I'm with go Tom to on that one. No. You're outnumbered. Yep. Outvoted. Oh, red, white, and blue? Come on. Wind up in the pitch. Right oh, what's so what? There's some gray do. mixed in. Come on, Larry. Look at the beautiful dark blue with some red piping or whatever you call it. Nice white pants. Wind up and the pitch. And this is popped way up. Right side. Second baseman ranging in. Makes the catch. One, two, three. They go to the top of the seventh. We go. It's 3-0 Bill Ricca on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the seventh inning. Bill Ricca would love to add some insurance here. Up 3-0, 2-3-4 three and four due up. Dangerous part of the order. John Wormeckel, James Alagna, and Craig Meeland. Matty Tomaselli out there on the mound. He has pitched very well today. He's given up three runs, two of which were earned, but has thrown a very good ball game against a tough Bill Ricca lineup. And he'll try to get through the seventh year to give post 77 a chance to try to get back into this game with the three outs they have left. This is hit in the air over to right field and caught. One away. 
And Fink with a nice catch. That'll bring up James Alagna. James Alagna today is two for three. A pair of doubles. Also scored a run. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. The 1 0. 2 and 0. Ashland Legion will be at home all week long. Monday, a 545 start against Hudson. Tuesday, 545 against Waltham. And Wednesday, 545 against Natick. 3 and 0 count now on Alagna. And we're down the street. It's going to be very hot this week. That's right. So bring your sunblock and maybe uh, your umbrella. Yeah. Three and one. And maybe some cooler with uh, waters in it. That's right. Yeah. You got to stay hydrated, right? Absolutely. Well, Alagna is going to be a teammate of Alex Amalfi. He's hit in the air, over in foul territory and out of the reach of everybody. Went to Shaw Sheen Tech. So they will be... Teammates next year. Ah. It's hot off the presses. There you go. The inside scoop. Brought to you by Larry. Yeah. He's a Belrica resident. The 3 1. Fouled away. Full count. He's one of the best plumbers, best young plumbers in the state and even the country. It says it right here. I'm reading the Lowell Sun here. Really? Yeah. He does like the plumbing field. It's not something he wants to do for the rest of his life except for hit baseballs like that. And that was a great catch in center field by Farrell. Two away. That'll bring up Craig Meeland. <laughs> Craig Meeland is... 0 for 2 today with a walk. Swing and a miss. Well, if Bill Rick is able to get the win here today, that will certainly be a big W in the books for post 268. 7 and 5 right in the mix for playoff spot as this is hit in the air. Over to center field, and that's going to get in front of Farrell. will roll all the way to the wall. Milan rounding first, heading to second. He's going to try to round third. The throw over to third is going to be in time. Got him. So Craig Milan going for the triple was thrown out at third, and it ends up being a 1-2-3 inning. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh, post 77, trailing three to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the seventh, post 77, down to their final three outs, trailing three to nothing. Offensively, it's been all Bill Ricca here today, but it's been a great pitcher's duel between Matty Tomaselli and Chris DeCicio. Of course, this game a lot more important for Bill Ricca than post 77. Ashland has established some distance between themselves and the rest of the zone for that one seed in the zone playoffs. And Bill Ricca, they are still fighting to clinch a playoff spot. Post 268 scored a run in the second inning, a run in the third, and a run in the sixth. And it's three to nothing as post 77 down to their final three outs, a spot that they haven't found themselves in a whole lot this year. But you, you can never count this team out. Certainly can't. Ben Fink, Dante Diavanzo, and Sam Farrell do up. Chris DeCicio trying to get the complete game win against post 77. There's a strike to Fink. The 0-1, breaking pitch up high, one and one. Oh, 
Wind up and the pitch down low. The 2 1. Down low. Here's the 3 1. Hit in the air, right side, and it is out of the reach of roughing. Fouled away, full count. Think so far today, 0 for 1 with a walk. Coming into this game was hitting at 250. The payoff pitch fouled away. Count remains full on Fink. Second payoff, down low, and he draws the walk. Dante Divanzo will step in. Sam Fair will do up next after him. And there'll be a talk on the mound as Bill Ricca, head coach, will come out to talk to DeCicio. And is he taking the ball? Looks like he is, so we're gonna have a relief pitcher for Bill Ricca post 268. We'll t take a timeout and then we'll fill you in on who that is. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Holliston. Relief pitcher for Bill Ricca post 268. CJ Zemetris moves over from shortstop to take over on the mound. And now, over at shortstop was the starting second baseman, Nick Benson. And we'll try to fill you in on who's at second base as that pitch is just high to Diavanzo. One and oh. Chris DeCicio pitched a gem today for Bill Ricca. Went six plus innings, giving up no runs, three hits. As this is up the left side. Flipped to second for one, now the throw to first. Not in time. First baseman got pushed off the bag, so Diavonzo reaches on the 6-4 force out. One away, Sam Farrell will step in. Post 77 down to their final two outs. Farrell 0 for 2 with a walk. There's a strike, gets away from the catcher. Runner thought about going, but will stay put. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. 0 oh and 2. Set to deliver, fouled away. Count remains 0 and 2. Wind up in the pitch. Hit in the air, foul out of play. Good battle here between Sam Farrell and CJ. Zemetris. Swing and a miss. Out number two, post 77 down to their final out. 
Drew Rancatori steps in. Well, Bill Ricca looking to hand Ashland their first loss of the season. And this is an absolutely crucial game for post 268. Post 77, not so much, but of course, it was one they were hoping to grab the W in. One and O on Rankatori. Symmetris looks at first and deals up high. If Rankatori shall reach, Jackson Horning would step in. The 2 0. Hit in the air, right side, and foul. Two and one. Two one pitch, fouled away. Two and two. Post seventy seven down to their final strike. Swing and a miss, and that is going to do it. Bill Ricca post two sixty eight hands Ashland post seventy seven their first loss of the season. Ashland, no runs, three hits, three errors. Billerica, three runs on seven hits, no errors, four post 268. Billerica improves to seven and five on this season. Post 77 falls to 12 and one. Tough loss to take for Ashland, but you know what? It's better to lose now than in the postseason. And there's a whole lot of games coming up this week, and the magic number is one for post 77 to clinch the zone. So things still looking great for Ashland Legion Baseball. The final score for the final time, Bill Ricca takes down Ashland by a final score of three to nothing. For my broadcast partners, Steve Watson and Larry Sacklad and Connor Donovan on camera, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and we'll talk to you again soon.